How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be making this really cool text animation with geometry nodes. You can make text and geometry nodes if you didn't know. Uh, so we'll get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, so as the, at the time of recording this tutorial, we are in Blender 3.0. Uh, but what I'm showing you is a 3.1 beta thing because it has the extrude node. So what you'll need to do is Google Blender Daily Builds. You need to go to the Blender Daily Builds page. Just go ahead and Google that and it'll bring it up right for you. And then just go ahead and download the beta and then unzip that folder. And then what you'll need to do after that is just go ahead and launch Blender right here. Okay, so now that we are in the beta, let's go ahead and get a plane. Now, if you're watching this in the future, after, Blender is Blender 3.1 is official. Don't worry about daily builds. Uh, so now that we have this plane, we're gonna go here to geometry nodes, geometry, geometry nodes. Can't speak today. And I'm gonna click new and we're gonna delete the group input and I'm gonna go get a string to curves. String to curves is our text node basically. So here in the string portion, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in, and you can type in whatever text you want. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and center this out. So middle and center. Now we go ahead and pick a font that you like. I'm gonna go ahead with this one and then I'm gonna hit RX90. And uh, there we have it, that is our uh, text. So we need to add a couple nodes here now. Let's go here to uh, curves to mesh. So shift A search curve to mesh and get a circle we'll get a curve circle and we'll plug the curve into the profile curve and then bring that radius down to 0 0.01. So there we go, now we have this right here. And then what I'm gonna do is get in a translate instance. So translate instance node here and plug it there. What this is gonna allow you to do is move your text around, which is super important. I'm gonna go ahead and bring my radius up to that. Maybe, one five, so 0 0.015. And then what I wanna do here is get a join geometry node. Join geometry, plop it there, cause I'm gonna make a duplicate. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight these guys and then shift D and then plug curve instances into the curve here and plug this translate into the join geometry and translate this guy a little bit forward and then bring the radius to 0 0.005. And there we go, we have just a little bit of detail, extra detail, extra detail in this text. Now we need to do the thing that is only compatible in the beta build of blend of, of 3.1, which is an extrusion. So let's go ahead and get in a fill curve to flatten this out. So plug curve instances into fill curve and then plug mesh into join geometry and you'll notice now it's filled out. Let's get an extrude, well, let's get a translate first. So let's go ahead and plug this translate here and then get an extrude. Extrude mesh and now it extruded it out and we're just gonna go ahead and extrude it pretty far out and then just go ahead and translate that back here because it can't, it can't do negative values. Now keep in mind, it's hollow, so but this is our extruded text. We're done with geometry nodes, pretty much. That's it, now we're, done. now we're done. Now we need to go to shading and animation. So what we need to do first is get our shading nodes. So I'm gonna hit G and move this over and let's get a set material. Set material node and then shift D, shift D. So I'm gonna click on Eevee 
So make sure you're in the EV workspace and you're gonna need bloom, anti ambient occlusion, and uh, that's pretty much it, that's all we need. So let's go and get in a material. So new material, go from principled to emission, and then make it whatever blue color you want and give it a strength of like 50. And then right here on these two, because these two correspond to the little wireframes. So let's go ahead and add that material right there. Now we have this little detail. And then on this back one, we're gonna add a new material. Click new and we're gonna call it grade. Short for gradient, because now we're gonna add a gradient. So first off, on uh, these two materials, we need to enable transparency because we're gonna do some transparency on both of them. So right here on blend mode, go to alpha blend. And then on this gradient as well, go all the way down to alpha blend on the blend mode. So let's click on this shader workspace and start working on this. So let's go ahead and delete this principled node and I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these windows and get two materials, an emission material and a transparent. And then let's get a mix shader. Let's go ahead and plug that there. We'll plug the transparent here and a transparent here. We'll get a color ramp. Plug the color ramp into the factor and then we're gonna get a gradient node. So gradient texture, plug it there and then with the node regular add-on enabled, it comes to Blender by default, just hit Control T, having the texture clicked and then we'll go to the object coordinate. Now we need to go back here to geometry nodes and actually select the gradient material. Boom, now we're back. And then we'll go back here to the shader workspace. Okay, so now that we have all these plugged together, I actually want the emission to be plugged into this bottom shader. So I'm gonna swap them out because that's how it worked with my initial design. So you can see how the gradient is not working correctly. So you need to go ahead and rotate your texture. So for me, it looks like it needs to be rotated by 90 degrees. Yours might be negative 90, and then do that kind of stuff. And then we need to play with the X axis to get our gradient to move where we want it to move. And then right here on the color ramp, you see how it says linear? We'll go here to B spline, and that's gonna really give you a beautiful gradient. So I'm gonna bring this all the way over there, something like this, and then we'll go ahead and see how it has this kind of hard edge. The B spline isn't perfect, and I really want it to be nice and smooth like this. So what I'm gonna just do is bring that location here and then bring that scale back. So what you can do is bring your X location here, so however far back you want this fade to be, and then play with your Z scale and bring that kind of ugly edge back. And there we go. Now this is stretching back, and then we can go ahead and meet this emission, um, this emission color with the material that it's with. So there we go. Now we have a really cool look. Now in the world settings, what I wanna do is give it a nice purple color to match the whole vibe of what we're doing. And then maybe we can bring this color up. There we go. Now we have something pretty cool with this purple world to kind of mix some color together. So now let's go ahead and start animating this. Now, like I mentioned, both materials need to have some transparency. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to slot number one and add a transparent node on this wireframe. And we'll, I'll show you why we're doing that later. So let's get a mix shader. Add that here and add this here. Now we're adding this because we need to utilize some, uh, basically like hiding it, a little trick to hide the text later. But for now, this will do. All right, so now I'm gonna go here to the layout and I'm gonna add my camera really quick. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, get my camera, and then go up to here, Control Alt Zero, snap it to view, and then in my camera settings, I'm gonna go from perspective to orthographic and we'll do that. I really love orthographic camera views. It's really nice. Now, first off, this is very ugly and faded, um, and that's because of my colors. So I'm gonna go to my, uh, my materials here. We'll go back to shading and just make this look really pretty before we start animating, just to uh, fix this up. So I'll make this something like, something like this. It's pretty bright, but that's okay. And then um, here in the color management settings, we'll bring that gamma down to be something like that. And then we'll bring the world 
the world to be a little bit brighter, which truly really just evening it out. But yeah, now we have a little bit of color. It looks a little bit more contrasted, which is what we're looking for. So something, something like this. Kind of looks the same again, but you can just work with your um, work with your scene till you like how it looks. Really, just get it to your your style, your look. There we go. Okay, that looks a lot better. Nice and bright, nice and dark here. And then we'll go back to slot number two, which is the gradient. Bring that strength up on the brightness, and then again make this more of a deep blue. There we go. Now it's pretty. We can proceed with animation. So what we need to do here to animate is here on the uh, the gradient, we're gonna go ahead and on the location, just bring it back till it's gone. And let's focus on animating this. So we'll go to slot number one, and then we'll hit this little plus icon to bring this up, go down, and we'll go to the timeline. So we need a timeline here. And then let's go edit preferences, Right here on your default interpolation, set it here to linear. And then I'm gonna go here and we'll start at frame six, maybe frame five, and we'll get that strength to be zero. Now my strength looks like it's at 140. So I'll remember that, I'm gonna hit I, and then we'll go here to maybe frame 17 and we'll do 140 on the strength, hit I. So click on the emission, there we go. Now we have that. And then right here, let's go to our preferences and on the default interpolation, we'll go here to constant. And the reason why we want to do that is we want to animate this transparency. So right here where the animation starts at frame five, I'm going to hit I and then we'll go back and make that transparency come in. I'm going to hit I and so now you can see it's gone and then it comes in. So that's really important. So now here on the emission, I'm gonna go ahead and animate that. So we need to go here to the animation workspace. I'm gonna hit zero to go to my camera view, make this window smaller. We'll go here and we start animating. So I'm gonna hit this drop down. We're gonna go to the graph editor. And then here in the material, we're gonna go to the shader node tree and then um, make sure we have that plane selected. Default value emission. So here we have it, we can see our animations right here. So playing with our emission, let's go ahead and hit this over here and then go to modifiers, add modifier, and we're going to add noise. So we need to restrict our frame range. So I'm gonna click this right here and then start at frame five and end over here, it looks at frame 17. So end one, seven, enter. And then we'll just go ahead and bring that strength up. And so you can see it happening already. Already, it looks pretty cool. And then we can go ahead and play with that, uh, that scale if we want to. So you can play with your scale to make it more dramatic, play with your phase, and we'll press play. Really cool. So play with your settings until you get what you like. Um, can be kind of finicky sometimes, but it's really cool. And then the last thing we need to do is go back to uh, shading Go to your preferences here again and make sure you are on a Bezier keyframe. And then we're gonna go to slot number two for the gradient. So let's see. Right here is where we wanna start animating in our gradient. So it's gonna come in like that. So I'm gonna hit I and then go pretty far down here and animate our fade. And I'm hit I again. So now let's see how that looks. Perfect, maybe a little bit slower. Awesome, all right, now let's go ahead and render this out to add some compositing. So I'm gonna hit the render button. Now that we have this frame, I'm gonna go here to the compositor, hit use nodes, I'm gonna hit shift A and get in a viewer. And we'll plug this here. And then I'm gonna hold down shift right click so that we can get all the uh, stuff to affect both. Let's get a glare node first, because I want to add some streaks. So we'll go ahead and bring your streaks down to two, and then get that offset angle to match the angle of the text. Perfect. Bring your iterations to five, 
bring your fade up a little bit. There we go. And then bring your mix down, which is kind of like your transparency, just makes it less powerful. Next thing we're gonna do is add a node to give it kind of an old vintage look. So we're gonna get a lens distortion node. And then we'll bring that dispersion up. And then we're gonna do jitter. So what jitter does, if we go here to the, uh, the viewer and zoom in, it gives you this nice little grainy look and that's really cool. And I'm gonna click fit and that's gonna kind of fit this here. So I'm gonna hit, so there we go. Now we have a kind of a vintage look on our scene. And if we go back to rendering, this is how it's looking. Bad composition. So we're just gonna go ahead and fix my camera location to be something like that. And I'm gonna hit the render button. And there we have it, our design. It looks really cool. And you can play with your um, camera location, all that fun stuff, do whatever you like, but it animates in just like that. And then I'm gonna go to maybe frame 105. So end at 105 frames and then it'll restart. just like that. So there you go, that is the animation. I'm gonna show you how to export this. You can either do a PNG sequence, so click on the little camera icon, and you can save where you want save, do a PNG sequence, or if you want just it to export out a video for you, we're gonna go to FFmpeg video on encoding, do MP4, and then on medium quality, go to perceptually lossless, and then render, render animation, and when you're done, you'll have something that looks like this. So it's really cool. It's really fun. And that is how you make this. Again, if you want to check out real time materials that is in the description. And thank you guys for watching.